If you want the ultimate in control of your image tonal values, you'll need to master the tone curve controls in Lightroom's develop module. In this video, I'll show you how. I'm going to start working over here in the basic pane with the exposure slider. And this is where I almost always start, just to get the image in the ballpark. Now I'm looking at my histogram, and I'm going to click and drag my exposure value over to the right, lightening up a little bit, because a lot of those tonal values are clumped to the left. You can see that in the histogram. So I'm going to brighten the image up just a little bit by moving that exposure slider. I'm just going to get in the ballpark. Okay. Now I'm going to move down to the tone curve pane, open that up. And with Lightroom, you have two basic choices in the tone curve. You can use the parametric tone curve, which is showing right here, where you have highlights, lights, darks, and shadows as four points or four regions to work with on the tone curve. And you also have a point tone curve. I'm going to select that now, where you actually set the points. Uh, you can set up to 14 points. So you have a lot of control with the point curve. It's a little bit harder to use. So I'm going to go back over to the parametric curve, which I find very useful, and I use this a lot. So let's start by looking at the sliders, because that's probably the easiest way to control this curve. I'm going to go ahead and move that slider to the right, and just watch the curve. See how it's bending up, moving to the lighter values, as I move that highlight slider to the right. And now I'm going to move it to the left, and it's going to go to the darker region. And you can see the highlights in my image also darkening. Now to reset that, I just double click on that triangle. So now let's come down to the light slider. Do the same thing, move it to the right. You can see that region, the light region, is now brightening up. And as I move the slider to the left, it's darkening. And you can see the graph is bending down. Let's reset that. OK. And darks. All right. Brighten those up and darken them. And one more of the shadows. Brighten the shadows. You can really see it there as the shadows open up. And now we can really shut those down by going to the left. All right. So let's reset that. So that's the slider control over the parametric curve. Let's see another way to control that curve. I'm going to hold my cursor right over the graph. And you can see that wherever I put the cursor on this line, there'll be a corresponding region that appears here. So up here, it's the highlight region. And I can click and drag the curve manually up and down. Or I can just use my up and down arrow keys, which I'm doing right now. OK, so that's your control of your highlights. And now this would be the lights. And I'm going to use my arrow key down and arrow key up to control lights. And there's the darks. OK, so we're, we're just using the graph right off the graph itself, much like we were using the sliders. Just pretty straightforward control over those four regions. OK, there's one more way, and this is a very popular among photographers who like working directly off their images. I'm going to select the Target Adjustment tool here. And now I'm going to drag this over to the Image Preview window. Now watch what happens when I move my cursor over various tonal values. There's the highlights. Down here will be the shadows. We can probably find some light area. There's the darks. OK, and there's our lights. Now, I can control these regions by clicking and dragging right on the image itself. So I'm going to drag down with my cursor. And you can see the lights. The graph is bending down. The light slider is moving to the left. All right, so let's move that back up a little bit. We don't want to go too dark. And then we can come up to our highlights and click and drag up and brighten those, or click and drag down. So you see what I'm talking about? You get so much control over different regions of your, the tonal graph by this method. So let's click over here. Now we're in the darks. And we can really work the image and very, get very detailed in our control over the way the uh, tones are mapping. OK, so let's see. Now if you want to turn off the effect and see what you've done compared to how it was before, you just come over here and click on this little switch. And you can go on and off, toggle back and forth. 
just to compare the before and after right there. I want to take your attention down here to these three triangles. This is where you get a little bit more control over the width of any given tonal range. So you move it to the left, move it to the right, and you see how the values are changing, the graph is changing as I move that. It's very much about fine-tuning. This is at the very end where you just want to tweak your graph just that little bit more to make it perfect. Now to reset those back to their default, you right-click on the graph and you can reset the splits that way. And also, probably saw that when I right-clicked, you can also reset your, your point curve, your reset all, you can reset the regions, you have control over the entire tone curve here. If you prefer presets, you can also just use the medium contrast preset and the strong contrast preset. Okay, so now I'm going to reset the regions like that, and I think I'll bring this down to its linear preset, and I'm going to go to the point curve now. Click on that little icon, and now we're in the point curve. All right, I take a deep breath here because this is a little bit, this is deeper water. I'm going to try to simplify this because it can get very complicated. I'm going to suggest that you start with one of these presets. Let's say strong contrast. And you can see that's setting four points. Now you can set up to 14 points on this graph. But let's just start with these four points right now. Let's see how these four points work in the point tone curve. So I'm going to hold my cursor over this point here and click and drag. Now I'm just controlling that area, that region, that point, if you will, making it darker. If I move it to the right, I'm brightening it up. And if I move to the right, I'm increasing the contrast. You see how that works? Okay, so that's that point. Now I can do the same thing up here. Click and drag and it's going to darken that area and lighten that area, and if we want to add a little contrast, we move it to the right. Okay, now I'm doing this very subtle movements There, up and down, oh, that's nice. Look at how that brings out the color in the, that highlight area. All right, so now if I really want to get into fine tuning, I can create more points. Now how do you do that? So let's pick a point right between this point and that point, a value, a tonal value that would exist right in between. So I'm going to click there, and now you see there's a new point. Now if I do the same thing with that point, I can control that independently. I can really fine tune the control over that now much narrower tonal region. Okay, And the same thing goes down here. I can click and make another point and control that. So this is what I mean by just ultimate fine tuning control. Now if you want, if you prefer working straight off the image itself, once again, you can select the Target Adjustment Tool, come over here. Now look what happens to the graph. You see, as I move my cursor around, the little dot appears. Now if I click there, that's going to create a point. That now sets a new point there. And if I pull up, drag up, and drag down, I'm controlling just that area. That's what I mean. Look at that. Look at that control you have. Just, It's great. But now that I've shown you how much control you have, let me show you what happens when you go overboard. See? See, there's no, <laughs> there's no stopping you with this point tone curve. So I can really get wild. See how this works? Okay. It's fun, but it, you know, we're out of the realm of normal photography. We're really getting pretty surreal here. And I guess you can have a lot of fun. But I'm going to caution you that if you're just trying to tweak your image, get it right, get it perfect, move very subtly, move very carefully. So if you want to remove any of these points, uh, here's a caution. Don't hold your cursor over it and click on the delete key. Because if you do that, and I, I think in Photoshop, that's how you get rid of a point and the curve there. If you do that in Lightroom, you're going to actually delete your photo from your collection. <laughs> so you don't want to do that. Instead, just double click on it and it goes away. Double click and you see I'm removing these points. Or if you want to reset the entire curve, right click and flatten curve. So very good. Take some time, familiarize yourself with the tone curve controls. See what happens to a variety of your own images when you move the tone curve sliders left and right. See what happens when you set your own points, drag them up and down, left and right. The process may seem daunting at first. Don't let it intimidate you. 
With Lightroom, you can always start over. And once you get the hang of the curves, you'll be amazed at how much quality you can pull out of your image files. 